I said it to say, once you have the Holy Spirit, it comes in and does similar to that. It starts to scan you, your body, so to say, let's just say in the spirit, let's say in the spirit. It starts to scan your body for anything dark and it has to go. Anything that's dark, it goes. It cleans you up. What's left though? After the Holy Spirit steps in. What's left? The last thing that has to be now changed in a believer. Romans 12 and 2 says what? Renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. It's the last thing. Even though your mind is clean, there's still, the way I see it is, there's imprint, so to speak. Remember when we talked about the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, where the slaves were given notice that they were free, but yet some of them stayed there because they could not, they didn't know where to go. What am I supposed to do? This is what I've done all my life. So even though they were free, they stayed in captivity. Some of them, some of them understood they were free and they took their skills and they went and they started businesses, they bought land, they did a lot of things. But some who only who could not fathom in their mind what to do from there stayed in captivity. The, the, the Israelites stayed in captivity even though they were free, they were still, their mind was still on Egypt and they said we were better off back there. It's the renewing of the mind. It's the transforming of the mind. See, once the Holy Spirit is in me and everything that's dark is out of me, I still have this battle in my mind, like the sister said. It's still there. How is that possible? So, uh, possession means to fully control, right? One definition of possession means to fully control. If Who's in control once the Holy Spirit takes over you? Who's in control? God is in control, right? So if God is in full control now, he's in control, how can God and Satan be in control at the same time? Who, the Bible says we're bought with a price, right? If I buy something, I, I would. I own it. I also would. Possess it. It's in my it's mind. It's mine. Even if I let somebody uh, use it, it's still mine. So, because why? Because I purchased it. I was I bought it. So it's mine. Even if somebody uses it, it's mine. I own it. We, being children of God, are what? Bought with a price. Who owns us? The Lord. Who controls us? If I buy something. I have the right to do what I want to do with it, right? I own it. I can do what I want to buy. Buy a house, and it was purple. I can change it to ugly green if I want to, right? Whatever I want to do with it. I can put an elevator in it, whatever I want to do to it, because it's mine. No one else can say anything about it. I control it. If we are bought with a price by the Lord, he controls us. Satan does not own us. He cannot, he does not have the power to own us, control us, or possess us. I'm talking about spirit-filled believers. So what is his power? It's just like Sister Linda said, he can influence them. He can come. I just want to look up the definition of oppress real fast. <clears throat> Was not Jesus spirit filled? Would you would you uh would everybody agree? Oh, yes. Jesus spirit filled, right? But yet he still came. Anybody got a tip? Is that oppression? Just oppress, just the singular where I got it right here. It says to keep and subservience and hardship, especially by unjust exercise, uh, to cause 
to feel distressed, anxious, or uncomfortable, uh, to control or rule in a harsh, cruel way, uh, to cause to feel burden in spirit. Uh, so it is to keep. Now let me let me, let me um, give you guys this word because uh, some people you look up definitions and then it's a. Uh, other words that you need to uh, sub subservience the condition of being uh, less important than something willingness to obey uh, unquestionably um, so it says the condition of being less important he has the power to influence to push you down and oppress and think about an oppressor they hold people down he can hold you to a certain extent but that's only if you give him that power it's only if you give him that control. Um, let's go back to the story of Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus is here, full of the spirit, but yet Satan comes to talk to him, to tempt him. What's his motive? Mr. Damon already got touched on. What's his motive at this point? Right to now. gain control of them, to kind of like rule him, mm -hmm. have authority over him. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's trying. What's, what's Satan's motive when he meets Jesus, when he confronts Jesus in the wilderness? What's his motive? Yes, sir. To, um, to make him alive, to show that he can control him and all of them. Okay. He was trying to come after his identity. Okay. He was trying to, you know, challenge his authority. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, to make him disobey God. Okay. Disobey God. Yes, sir. To get in his head. To get in his head. All of what y'all said was true. He was trying to get in his head. Now, here's the thing. Tie this up. Satan, to a spirit-filled believer, cannot enter in freely and get into the control room. Why? Because he's confronted with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that demons believe, they know, and they tremble. So he tries to come in, he's confronted with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there and say, well, not this one. We already bought this one. You can't get in here. So what he'll try to do is stand on the outside. Remember, Jesus said, the prince of this world comes, but there is nothing of him but me. So he, Satan could not enter into Jesus. He says, the prince of this world comes, but there is nothing of him in me. See, Satan goes and he looks. Can I get in at any, is there any way I can try to get in? And can I come through the back door? Can I come through the front door? Is there anger? Is there lust? Where, where can I get in at? Yeah. To an unbeliever, he can get in anywhere. It doesn't make a difference to an unspirit, to a non-spirit uh, field Believer, he can get in anywhere. And I don't want to say unbelievers. Unbelievers, yes. Even believers without the Spirit, he can get in. So I just want to make that clear. Because there's believers that don't have the Holy Spirit, and he can get in. Uh, it's only the ones with the baptism of the Holy Spirit that he cannot get in to fully control. How does he operate then? You ask, that's the first question I start off with. If if that's if that if you have the Spirit and yet but yet, you're full of the Spirit, but yet he still somehow can influence you. How is that even possible? He stands yeah. on the outside. For example, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. Yeah. He was hungry. Yeah. So okay. he saw the leeway to tempt him because he knew his body was weak from fasting. Mm -hmm. So he knew he could gain access through... Um, if you want to eat, yeah. command the stones to become bread. Yeah. So he's always looking around like a lion to yeah. see who who is weak yeah. or who is susceptible for his temptation. Yes, yes. He find, tries to find a way. Now, here he is. You see Jesus been fasting. So there it is. That's, that's another point. He sees us. He can see our situation. Yeah. And he comes and he makes... Uh, some kind of attempt on that situation. So if he see you at the table with a bunch of bills and then you're looking like uh, overwhelmed, he's going to 
going to send something to that situation. And the person starts to get depressed and, and that fear. You know what I'm saying? And then he starts to and, and uh, then he starts to speak right to that situation. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I was thinking about the scripture that was telling us how we should walk in the spirit and how the flesh and the you know how they contrary to one another always mm -hmm. like at each other. You know. Yeah. 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 Amen. Walking the spirit will not will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, and it says the uh, spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. They are uh, contrary to each other. Uh, so he sees the situation that you're dealing with. He'll send things. How does Satan operate to a spirit-filled believer? We see that in Scripture. He operates from the outside. He approached Jesus, knowing I cannot get him. I cannot get inside him. No way I try. I can't get in him to control him. No way that I can try. No, there's no avenue, no opening in him that I can get in. However, how did he get in? He got in, or well, he tried, he didn't get in at all. He stands on the outside. This is his spiritual believer, and he talks. That's what he do. The only problem today is what makes it harder is we don't see him. You don't see him. Jesus saw him flat out, and there was no way he could disguise himself against Jesus, the Son of God, who also had seen him when he when he was Lucifer. He knows every aspect about him. You know, they used to he used to reside right with them up in the heavens. But here it is, so there's no way he can disguise himself, no sense to try to disguise himself. That's why you don't see him. He didn't come as a snake. He didn't come as anything else. He came as who he is, and because Jesus would already have known who he was. So, but that's what he does. He stands on the outside and he talks to the spirit-filled believer. What does he say? What does he say to the spirit-filled believer? A whole bunch of lies. A whole bunch of lies. Look at your situation. He tries to get you to look at your situation. Tries to get you to see that there, 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 you're going to always be in this situation. There's no way out. There's not no change going to come. You're always going to be at this job. You all, Whatever it is, he, get, he sits there and tries to get you. Now, what is his motive? What's his intent? And I'm going to get that in a moment after I get you. Yes, ma'am. Um, think about this group about him being an accuser of the brethren mm -hmm. and how even with like with Jesus at that point how when he got enough he was told him to get behind me you know yeah. what I'm saying but even like sitting here listening to all this teaching how the enemy can still be when you get you know not focusing and not paying here he comes you know mm -hmm. like he said with word but that's why we supposed to know the word so I can use the word against him mm -hmm. amen amen um, so he's there outside of, of the believer he stands there uh, in stealth mode, as we had brought up a couple weeks ago. So you don't see him, and that's the most strategic part of him, is you don't see him. And so now he's speaking to you, but guess what it sounds like? It sounds like, it sound like our thoughts. It sounds like our thoughts. So we're more, we're more susceptible to believing He's in the, but, he, but it's him. He's telling lies to us. Mm -hmm. Now, he's the accuser of the brethren, just as the sister just said, right? And I like to say, he doesn't just accuse. So what does that mean? He goes to God and he accuses us before God. He's trying to get God to punish us. He, look, look what they're doing. Look, look, look what they're doing. <clears throat> the same way, he accuses us to God, he accuses God to us. Same way. He says things like, where is God now? Look how long it's taken. You pray. Look, look. Where? And he says these things. Anybody ever question the timing or something? Anybody ever wonder why it's taking so long? That's the accuser. So now, it sounds like us. And I always say, we, we say that a lot, it sounds like us, but it's actually no sound. It's just, really what it is, is just that familiar thought that we've heard. And why do our thoughts sound like us talking now? Don't our thoughts sound like us talking first? How does that even work? Because it's not really a sound. You're not hearing anything. It's just in your brain. But it does sound like the same thought of, of 
or if you recognize it as being the same thought of when you say, oh, I'm going to eat tonight for dinner. And that same thought is the same thing that comes when you get a profess. It's the exact uh, thought that you can identify, the sound, or uh, whatever that you can identify when you get a prophetic word. It's the same thing that comes when Satan talks. So Satan is talking. He's trying to influence us. He's trying to tempt us. What's his motive? What's his motive for talking to us? He's talking. Distract. Distract, okay. To see if, if we'll follow his agenda or help out his agenda. And that's the one thing. He has an agenda. He has a mission. And um, the only difference between him and some of us is he never deters from his. Uh -huh. He's a scripture worthy adversary. Uh -huh. <laughs> Meaning that he's on his A game. Yeah. The most wickedest way, though, not not in a positive way, in the most negative way, he's on his A game. Yeah. And he'll try to like like everybody's been saying, like he'll try to try any cracks, any house that's not build up a solid foundation. Yeah. He he wants to get that um your your house or your roof your spiritual roof if it's not taken care of he's, he'll let he'll he'll come down your chimney in the spiritual realm if you let him and all of that. So yeah, <laughs> it's to distract. It's to get us to uh, try to see if we'll follow him. Yes, ma'am. So we're not still his dominion, so we can be his agents too. Mm -hmm. Try to see if he can win us back over. When he met Jesus in that wilderness, he was trying, he used the same motive that he used on those other, what, one third of the other angels. Yeah. He used the same motive, manipulation. And he was trying to see, can I get him on my side? And that's what he's trying to do when he talks to us. So, Satan, I saw this, this is where I saw it in the spirit. You know, if anybody ever had a problem with their computer and you called in to fix it, and they'll tell you if you call a little hotline, they'll ask you for like a number or something somewhere on your computer, and they will get in your computer right from where they are. Yeah. They can remotely access your computer yeah. from wherever they are. Even in California, they can remotely access your computer. You start to see mouse movement and everything, the, the clicker and everything. He can't get in, but he'll try to remotely access your mind to try to control it from where he is. Now, he can't possess you, but somehow he still can get in our minds and try to influence our minds. Now, really what's going on though, he stands on the outside and he really you are really the operator of it. You really are the operator of the mind. He tells you, he'll put a thought. Remember, look at Jesus in this case, in the wilderness. Everything that was to transpire, Jesus was supposed to do. Remember, command the stones, jump from here. Everything that he was to do, it wasn't Satan that was doing it. It was Jesus that, that, was, that he wanted Jesus to do. So, for the believer, it's not Satan, it's him influencing, but it's him that wants us to fulfill it for purpose to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his motive for when he approaches us, to kill, steal, and destroy. And even if he's not physically killing us, he's trying to kill our character, he's trying to destroy our relationship, with God, whatever it is, he's trying to do that. So the question is, how do you get them out? How do you get them out? Now, let's start from the believe, the unbeliever to the full spirit-filled believer. How do you get them out? He's there. We can say, there's, like I said before, we can say there's no scriptures that point to that. But everybody in this room can attest that Satan tempts your mind. He 
comes. He does. So we know it's a fact. So how do you get them out? And we kind of already answered this, but I just want to revisit it and then we're going to get out of here. Yes, ma'am. I think for the unbeliever, the unbeliever means salvation means deliverance. For the believer, you have to be on your guard always. You can't let your guard down even for one minute because he's prowling like a lion to yeah. see how we can creep in. So we just have to be fortified, you know, um, with all our, the weapons of our, um, that we need to, when we, we want to go out each day, you know, through prayer, through the scriptures, we know what the word says, so we can throw it back at his face when he tries to sneak in. Yes, amen. To, to the unbeliever, the first thing you need to do, the first thing an unbeliever needs to do is get, you have to, they have to know, they have to gain, come to a place where they know the Lord. They have to get, get saved, seek after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have, you are a believer without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, in order for Satan to stop beating up your mind so much, you got to get the Holy Spirit. Because then you now have power. You have power. Now, to the believer with the Holy Spirit, she just uh, elaborated a little bit. Anyone else? Yes. I was going to say for the believer, I mean for the uh, spirit-filled person, not only should your temple be filled with prayer and praise, but um, when thoughts come, you're supposed to cast them down. You know, the Bible talks about casting them down. Every thought, every imagination, um, you cast it down. Mm -hmm. And you don't even entertain it. Mm -hmm. Um you know, as far as, for example, you know, suicidal thoughts or something like that, or whatever, you know, may come, or that you're not worthy, or things like that, you know, you cast it down right then and there. Don't even entertain that situation. Yep. So that's what you have to do, you know, moving forward. Right. Amen. Casting down thoughts, bringing uh, everything, every high thing uh, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity. So, there should be this place that you take these thoughts and put them into a, a jail, so to speak, a spiritual jail. Uh, this is not part of me. You in captivity. I can't. I pull you down and put you away. But the problem is, is a lot of people they don't cast these thoughts down. They dwell on them. They dwell on. Them. They dwell on these thoughts. Um, they dwell on these thoughts, uh, and then it causes a problem, right? So, um, what other ways? What other ways? I was gonna say, and when they dwell on them, they also, you know, they start to believe right. those thoughts, and, right? And then, then after that, believing, you know, they start entertaining it. Right. And start and it start, you know, becoming of them. Jesus showed us through scripture. I believe that's why that's is why that was there too. He showed us how to deal with Satan when he comes. When he comes, we are not to, like Minister Damon said, ignore him. And sometimes we don't even know we ignore him. We ignore him though when we entertain those thoughts. And we are not to ignore him, but we are to uh, address it. We are to hit him with the scriptures. Amen. If he tells us to do something, if he says, if he was to say, uh, if Satan was to tell you, spirit-filled believer, that God is not coming to address your situation, what would you tell him? So this is Satan now talking and saying, your situation ain't going to never change. It's going to stay the same. No change is coming. Who would you hit him with? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> right. okay. By the way, I shall not want, meaning that I'm going to get. Okay. <laughs> He's my shepherd. I'm going to get it. All right. Okay. Well, uh, God, God ain't coming. You might as well just give up. What, what you going to hit him with? Supply all of my needs according to the Okay. Come on. All right. Come on. That's that's two scriptures. <laughs> no, for real, that's yeah. two. Now we got yeah. one. We got two scriptures. Yeah. What else? What are you going? What you going to hit them with? God ain't coming. 
Yeah. You know, that, that situation ain't changing. Lean not into y'all in the same Okay. Ooh. All right. Well, let's okay. get it. Okay. Do, do not grow weary and well doing for a new season. You will reap. Uh, if you do not faint, you know, though the vision tarry, wait on it, for it is for an appointed time. So I know he's coming. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. The, uh, my Lord is coming. And you know, however, the scripture says, though the vision tarry, I'm waiting on it. I'm not going to faint. However, so you can't just allow him to just talk to you. You have to hit him with scripture. Because then it says, it says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Some people forget, they don't they forget that part when it says submit to God, resist. They just said resist the devil and he'll flee. But you gotta submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. You can resist all day long, but if you hit his, he ain't going over. That's like when people tell that's like telling your siblings when they when you were younger, uh to, to get out their room. You in their room and you tell them to get out, they come in there. That's their room. You know, he ain't, they're not going nowhere. It's their room. Yes, ma'am. And knowing who the devil is, he's the adversary. And knowing that the scripture says that he's the father of all liars, he don't do nothing but lie. Mm -hmm. I have to keep telling myself, you a liar. Yeah. You liar. So if he said that to me, it's a lie. Yeah. Just like the song I like, and I think you brought it up before. Uh, J. Kelly Carr got a song that she says, I, I have learned that everything the devil tells me that I'm not, I, I know that I am. And everything he tells me that I am, I'm not. And you have to you have to understand that anything he tells you that you're not, you are. And, and, uh, and anything that he says that you are, you're not. And because he's a liar. So if he tells you that you're going to be depressed all your life, no, you're not. You know, if he tells you that you're going to be in this financial situation all your life, no, I'm not. If he tells you that you are uh, an addict, I'm not. I, I, I don't have to be addicted or bound to anything. I am free through Christ Jesus. You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to hit him with these scriptures. Otherwise, you just believe it. Yeah. That's why we got to stop claiming these titles to things. You are not people. This, I'm depressed. No, you are not. You're not. I am victorious. I'm the righteousness through Christ Jesus. You have to be scriptures. Now, the problem with that is, and someone said it, if you do not know the scriptures, you cannot fight. Yeah. It's hard to fight. Yeah. It's hard to fight. I will be. Uh, it's too hard. This situation is more than I can handle. It's too hard. His grace is sufficient enough for me. All right. I can Amen. do all things. Yeah, come on. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. What you about to say? That was yours. Oh. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm an overcomer. When I'm weak. He is strong. Whatever, you know, you, whatever it is, you have to. And I'm going to tell you, if you've ever done that, you feel that strength. It comes on you. You feel that strength instead of subscribing to the same to the fact that oh, this is too much. Yeah. I don't know if I can make it through this. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I can handle this. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get through this. Most people say it's just too much, and that's him. And on the outside, telling you it's too much. He's telling you that, and then you speak it out, and because he understands that what our words have power, that life and death lie in the power of the tongue, and if we say it, it becomes established. Because the Bible says that if you decree a thing, it shall be established. He knows the word, so he'll tell you if you do, if if I can just get to to, to decree it, it's going to be established. So if they say out of their mouth it's too much, guess what? It's going to be too much. It becomes hard. You feel that burden more. It presses down on you even more. But when you start saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I am victorious. I'm an overcomer. Look, look how his power is less and less. It lifts off. Now the Lord, now you have strength, you gain the strength. And when you down, down like that, you, you start to rise up. His, his job is to try to push you down to the ground, to the fact, to the point where you have no more power. But you gotta hit them with the scriptures, and you have to uh pray. Is it rebuke him? Resist him? He'll flee. Yes, ma'am. 
I was just gonna say, um, the battle is not mine, it's the Lord, and and with God, with God, because it's not, I shouldn't be doing anything alone. So yeah. with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You might have pray. I pray like this in tears sometimes. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know this is not the end. I know that that I I'm, I would not be. Made a slave. If you're struggling with something, you have to pray that I will not be made a slave to this. Lord, give me the strategy to overcome, to be victorious. If you feel like you continue to fall down over the same thing, over the same thing, over the same thing, and that's not what you want to do, you, that's not your desire to be involved or in that, you have to pray. Lord, give me the strength so that I can break free from this. You have to. He will give you the strength. He will. Yes, ma'am. I remember as a little girl, um, my mom taught me a song that I could use to fight the battle. And she taught me, she said, um, get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee away. I have no business to do with thee today. So get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee away. I am a Christian soldier and I pray always. And I will sing yeah. it all day yeah. until I feel the release that yeah. it's finally like it's yeah. gone. Yeah. But it used to work. Amen. That, that, that's similar to the song that, that they taught me at the prison. And it was to that, oh, oh I think it, it comes from that beat, Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus. But they went to this part, Satan, take your hands off of me. Like this. Satan, take your hands off of me. I want to make it clear you ain't got no power here. Yes, right. Satan, take your hands off of me. Amen. And you can, if yes. whatever you got to do to get him away, if you lift up a song, whatever you got to do. And if that's submitting to God, you resist the devil, and he's going to flee. Now, it says flee. He out of there. When you start putting God in the place, he gone. Yeah. That's like a predator trying to come after a child and the parents or the police shows up. Mm. They flee. And that's not, fleeing is not running away uh, or, or, or jogging away. Mm. It's sprinting. They flee. They out of there. Um, so when you start to put God in place, Satan has to go. But the more we allow Satan in our space, the more of his empty brain and the more demonic spirits come and it's just a part of it they have. And they just all surrounding you with all of these things. Um, so it's important that we keep God in the midst of everything. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So just imagine how much power we can all have if we fasted for a long time. Yeah, um, fasting does have you focus on, uh, it gets you, your relationship stronger with the Lord, most definitely. When you fast, anybody ever been on fast and feel like you went to a new level? And God, you, 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 you do, your relationship does strengthen because, why? Because I'm only, at this time, that's my main focus. It's not on food or anything like that. It's on the Lord. I'm praying. Um, they always say, make sure you add prayer into fasting. Otherwise, you're just on a diet, you know. But you have to pray and spend time with the Lord, and you do become stronger. So here he is. You become stronger. Your relationship becomes stronger. And you also see that the power that you had, um, you, you start to notice, wow, I, I'm strong. In the, I can be strong in the spirit. Which is already there when you, because when you have the Holy Spirit, He automatically gives you power. But some people don't recognize their power until they actually do fast and see that they are strengthened. And they have that power. But anyhow, um, here He is. Strong relationship is strong, and then He's faced with this temptation, and it's only to show us that you do not ignore Satan. You have to put the word on him, rebuke him, resist him, and that's when he flees. So, as I close, I'm going to get you, um, as I close, you know 
that he's there. He's going to try to attack our mind. And it doesn't make a difference how strong. We see that in Scripture. He attacks the Son of God. He came to try to tempt the Son of God. How much more so us? So it don't make a difference from strongest believer to the weakest, to the unbeliever. He's coming. What we have to do is be ready when he comes. That's the thing. And how do you get him out of your mind? You have to hit him with the scriptures. You have to renew your mind. How do I renew my mind? That's the other thing. You wash your mind, so to speak, with the scriptures, with the word of God. You have to wash your mind with the word, as they say. Wash it. How do I wash my mind with the word? How do I reprogram my mind's word? You got to be in the word. You got to read the word. Yes, ma'am. Well, you already said it. That's oh. like, I just like what Brother Dane, uh -huh. what he was saying, because each time the devil was saying something, uh, Jesus kept coming back with the word, with the yep. book it is written on. He kept saying what the word said. Yep. And I'm saying, but the whole time we've been having this session, my mind was um, thinking about, even though how being saved and stuff like that, and you pray, you rebuke, you use the word. And one other thing to do is you, you gotta find strength enough to call somebody. Mm -hmm. You gotta talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Because, and I, I often wonder what happened, what went through his mind, and how did he get, you know, get to that, you know, for that to happen. But mm -hmm. as we talking, it's, it's kind of unfolds, but mm -hmm. my heart just really was, you know, towards him, thinking about him. You remember him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's so yeah. a man of God that you see on TBN like that, it's a tragic thing to happen. Right, right. And a lot of things, like you said, some people, what I call struggle in silence, and they have issues yeah. and they don't address them with anyone. Yeah. A lot of times, the reason why is because a lot of people don't know who I can talk to, who I can trust, who I can confide in. So they struggle in silence. Uh, and then that thing the Bible says, after sin is full grown, yeah. it brings death. So people can struggle for years with something and never tell anyone. And I say, I always tell people, if you can't tell anyone, if you don't feel like you can trust anyone, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord your problems and talk to him like the, and, and, that, and let, allow the Lord to be your counselor and say, I need help. You know, but also the Lord can show you people who you can talk to as well. You know, and I always tell people, for me, I'm not... For as much as the Lord has shown me mercy on, shown me grace, to set me free from, I'm in no way, it would be egregious of me to try to sit there and take someone's struggle and then judge them. Mm -hmm. yes. So I always say, if someone tell me that they have an attraction to purple cats, I'm not going to judge you. I want to help you get to the root of where that came in, and let's let you, let's help you be free. You know, but a lot of people, they don't know who to talk to. And so in his case, I think he was struggling in silence. Uh, it became full grown, and then it, it, uh, it brought death. I mean, literally, literal death, you know. But that's that's what Satan is trying to get us all to. And that's what his job is to do, kill, steal, and destroy. And if he can pick us off one by one, he will. But today, we decree that we are going to a higher level because we will be in our scriptures. We will, if Satan comes now, we have put it, we, uh, we, we put him on notice and we're going to hit him with the word. Sing a song, lift up a song. Don't just allow him just to talk to you for hours and days and weeks. Uh, that's what some people do. Uh, they allow him to talk for, not for weeks, months, years. And then he shapes this individual to uh, this very timid and no, you, they don't have any more fight left. It's just whatever, whatever wants, whatever happens, happens. But we have to be victorious and press forward. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we're gonna fight even harder, go even further in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just wanna, um, just wanna pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you all praise honor and glory just for who you are Lord and what you're doing in our lives oh God and Lord we say we submit to you Lord we are yielded vessels Lord to you right now we're yielded vessels Lord we yield our minds to you Lord we yield our bodies to you Lord as living sacrifices 
Lord, I, I pray for anyone that has allowed Satan to infiltrate their minds, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you give them strength today. Give them the strength, Lord, to combat Satan when he comes, Lord, to get Satan out of their mind, to stop the influence in their mind, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you give them the strategies, Lord. Give them the words to say so they know how to turn him away as he comes. More time, more time, the Lord says to someone, I'm requiring more time in my presence, more time in my word. Hallelujah. Lord, anyone that's struggling with anything, I pray, Lord, you give them the strength, oh God. Give them the strategies, Lord. Help them, Lord, to the one that needs healing, heal their bodies, to the one that needs peace. Lord, bring peace to them. One of these strength, Lord, I pray that you give them strength. In Jesus' name. Before we leave, if you need anything from the Lord, just lift your hands. His presence is here. Whatever you need, as you lift your hands, you say, I, what you're saying is, I surrender. I surrender to you, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Because he's, he's downloading now. He's releasing it now. So whatever you need, what was there is lifting. He's replacing it. There's an exchange right now. Hallelujah. There's an exchange right now. Just receive. Just receive it. Thank you, Lord. We receive it now, Lord. We receive it. We receive it. Oh, Lord, we receive it. We receive it. We receive your strength. We receive your joy. Someone, he's giving fresh vision right now. You, you have been wondering which way should I go? What's, what, what's next in my life? And he's releasing fresh vision to you right now. Fresh vision. A new season. A new path. I sense that in the spirit. To some, he's saying, just like the scripture says in Isaiah, Remember not the former things. So everything, the way that you thought, the way where you was. He says, remember not the former things for I am doing. Behold, look, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing for you. There's a new season coming for your life. New direction. And as it comes, you can't remember the past. You can't go back to the past. Totally new, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise now and forever. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Whatever, however you give a praise, just give a praise. He's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy of praise. Yes, worthy. You are worthy, God. You are worthy of all praise, honor, and glory.